We've just moved to phase two, the links below the video. This sale will go on from today until Sunday. Once again, you want to be part of the sale of the new activity of the new training to help you become a better man. Link is below. Tuesday through Sunday. All right, so let's get into this video. The death of the middle class. One of the things that I have consistently seen is young, seemingly healthy, attractive people make these TikTok videos. I actually got some opinions about that. Make these TikTok videos talking about the struggle, the um, situation out here. And this is the these young people, they're, they're going to be the well, they would have been the new middle class. Uh, essentially, prices have gotten so high that people who are making six figure incomes, a married couple that makes a six figure income cannot afford to buy a typical house right now. So what we're seeing is the jump start to the death of the middle class. Now, the middle class has been dying for quite some time, but it just got a jump start. And let me explain to you why. First, let's get into the TikTok videos. Um, we live in a social media age where everyone wants to get attention. They want to express themselves. They want to put themselves out there, right? So we have a bunch of people who are running the TikTok and taking topics to TikTok and doing dance and stuff so they can become social media people, so they can become influencers. And this right here, I think, is one of the worst uh, outcomes possible for someone who is trying to excel, trying to elevate, trying to bring their life up to go on TikTok. All right, so let's talk about the jump start. One of the things that we have is Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart, Spark, and probably 10 or 20 more I don't even know about. And what this is doing, essentially, I will say this. If you were willing, let me go ahead and talk about this. If you were willing to drive seven days a week, and work 10 to 12 hours a day, you can make $1,500 to $2,000 a week. This is a valid opportunity. But <laughs> how many of you going to work that hard? This is one of the problems because I, I, brought, I, I brought this up working seven days a week before and people were like, that video didn't get a lot of views. So many of you are just not going to work that hard. But the opportunity to go ahead and do DoorDash and once again, work seven days a week, work 10, 12 hours a day, you can make 1500 bucks per week. And it's something similar with Uber. In 2014, I was driving for Uber to write a book. Now, I had a SUV that had a third row seat. So I was able to do Uber XL. One Saturday, I got up and I worked all day Saturday. It was football season. It was kind of crazy, but I made $750 in one Saturday. I think I spent maybe 60 bucks in gas. So like $690 in one day. So what's happening with the gig economy for the people who choose to really go at it? Not the folks who, and also, I should say, let me put this out there. Um, I was single, not married, didn't have small children. I think that plays a huge role in people being successful with Uber, DoorDash, being single with no obligations, nothing to hold them back. And with these gig economy jobs for the people who are really, 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 really want to go at it. And I don't think when you're going to be, let me just go ahead and say this. I don't think where you're like 65 and you're doing DoorDash, you're going to do DoorDash seven days a week, 10, 12 hours a day. I don't see that. But 
there's a group of people who are really, really going hard on these gig apps. And here's the thing. There's a guy here on YouTube by the name of Nugs, N-U-G-G-S, Nugs. He's a very young guy. I don't think he's ever had. I think he worked at Wendy's and then he got in the DoorDash. Recently, he got deactivated. But Nugs, who I believe is 20, 20, between 20 and 22 years old, was making $10,000 per month between DoorDash and YouTube. Now, $10,000 per month. And this is one of the reasons that you'll see the people who talk about doing DoorDash and who have a YouTube channel don't work seven days a week because in many cases, their YouTube channel is making them more money than DoorDash. So with this new gig economy, once again, Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Spark, I think Amazon Flex, you have a lot of people such as Nugs who will never have a normal job. Let me say this again. You've got people out here who will never have a normal job. And one of the things that they will do, because essentially with these gig economy jobs, all you have to do is fill out an application on an app. They say, yes, you start working. There's no formal interview. There's no getting dressed up. And once again, this right here is the jump start to the death of the middle class. Hear me out. All right, so I know you're going, wait a minute. What's the problem with me being able to get a job and being able to start making money? All right, here's the thing with gig economy jobs. That's it. There's no promotion. There's no elevation. Do you see, once again, I, please put this in the comment. If you're in the gig economy, do you see yourself delivering food for the next 20, 30 years? It's, it's a dead end job. Yes. If you're willing to do a lot of work, if you're willing to stay on the road, just like I found out in 2014, I think that day I started at 10 a.m. And I went to like one. So it was like a 14 hour day to make six hundred and ninety dollars. So if you're willing to do that, but also. Once again, this is the death of the, the jumpstart to the death of the middle class. People know that out there that they can make this money doing a gig economy job. There was a guy in Hawaii who made one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars, but he's working seven days a week and he was working 12 to 20 hours per day. So, but people hear, oh, he, he's doing the gig economy. He made 114000 And they're not looking at the finer details. And this is one of the reasons that this is the jump start to the death of the middle class. These people are not going to um, put together a really outstanding career. They're looking at the money first. I can go out here. I can get this money. I can do this job. And this is one of the reasons uh, I feel that so many people who, who were in my building who got evicted were doing that type of stuff and it caught up with them. Because here's the thing. Um, because you know that there are jobs out there that you don't have to do an interview. You don't have to go through the interview process. You don't have to put on any clothes. You could just fill out an app on your phone. And next thing you know, download the app. You're working. This is the death. Because let me give you an example. Years and years ago, and you will see this up in New York, Boston, New Jersey. You will see a family of people, a family of people who are becoming firefighters, firefighters, or a family of people becoming police officers. And essentially, if you get into the police force and you stay a long time, you can graduate. You can become a sergeant. You can become a lieutenant. You can become a detective. You can become a chief. There, there's, there's graduation levels in, in being in the 
police department. There's graduation levels being in the fire department, fire firefighter department. There's graduation levels. And this is how these people who can go in, start off as a firefighter, as a police officer, even there's graduation graduation levels even in sanitation. And they can like one day be driving the truck and next day they can next 10 years they could be the supervisor. So this is missing from the gig economy. There is no graduation. There's no promotions. There's no upward. There's nothing. And right now you have so many people who are running to the DoorDash, running to Lyft and Lyft and Uber. And one of the things I watch these channels and I, I, someone left a comment. I'm doing DoorDash and DoorDash got me rich. Let me say something. If you think the money, even if you were doing it seven days a week and you were making fifteen hundred bucks in a week and that's like six thousand dollars a month. If you think that's rich, you were really not making any money in your life. You've never seen any real money because I have made twenty five thousand dollars in a in a few hours, in a few hours sitting in this chair, not going anywhere. But once again. Because of the gig economy and all of these young people who are running to these gig economy jobs, because number one, they don't want to work for anyone. They don't want to ask permission because, you know, when I started working, you didn't get a vacation for a year. Um, typically, there was three weeks before you got your first check because you had two weeks in the hole, as we used to call it. And right now you have a group of people who just do not want to do that. And they can go out and get one of these gig economy jobs, kind of work in the morning, kind of work in the evening. And here right now, it looks great. It looks good because they're making that money. They're making that money. And once again, this is the jump start to the death of the middle class because they're not creating a, a career with graduation levels. Once you start doing DoorDash or let's say if you're multi apping, as they call it, if you're doing Lyft and you're doing Uber and you're doing DoorDash, essentially you're in your car and your apps are clicking, clicking, clicking. And you're you like in a good day, you may make 400 bucks. Let's say you're doing the gig economy and you make 400 bucks a day between Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart, whatever, whatever apps that you signed up for. Now you do this Monday through Friday and you hit $400 a day and that's 2000 minus gas. And let's say you spent 40 bucks per day. So that's 200. So that's $1,800 that you made and you could take the weekend off. Once again, these people are not looking at the future. Once again, I'm going to ask yourself, you know, I, like, I, I see comments like I enjoy delivering food and stuff like this. Um, OK, um, here's the thing. And to quote one of my neighbors growing up, Miss Sally Mae Jones, if you live long enough, you're going to get old. And one of the things that I see, because I got on my graduation journey at the age of 32 and from 32 to 34 I got into the six figure club because I got myself in situations where I could graduate I started off at Renecrate then I went to panel systems and I went to business environments each job was a graduation level I went from making $38,000 to making $650,000 in two years. This is not something you're going to do with a gig economy job. Also, let's talk about it. It was a rough journey. It was not easy. I, there was times I was working 80 hours a week. There was times it wasn't easy. It wasn't simple, but it was worth it. And this is one of the things that since this is the jump start of the death of the middle class, that all these people are running to these gig economy jobs and there are no graduation levels. There are no health benefits. There is no retirement. Nothing. There, there is nothing. And also in 2014, when I signed up for Uber, I actually signed up under LLC. 
the vast majority of people who are doing gig work have not signed up for an LLC. They don't have ADP. They're not paying themselves properly. They don't even have, you know, that's going to be a video in the future, how to do the gig work work properly and to set yourself up for better outcomes. Because without the graduation levels, you're just essentially you're running away from a normal nine to five that could be a dead end job. And then you go ahead and get a dead end job that gives you more hours. So you leave the nine to five to go out here and do this gig economy stuff. And then once again, if you're willing to work long hours, you can make the money. But here's another thing. What about the toll on your body? See, years ago, when I used to be in the storage auction business, I routinely worked 12, 16 hour days. Right. But guess what? I went to the gym. I was working out. I went to the gym. I had a gym in my house and then there was a gym I would go to. So I was working out five days a week. I would go up, get up in the morning, release Craigslist ads. Then I would uh, go to storage auction deals. And then in the evenings, I would go work out in the gym. So I was working out and I was younger. Now, I don't know if I could do 12 hour, 12. Well, actually, when I got in the store, when I got into the car rental business, I was doing 12, 14 hours a day. So, yeah, I could still work like that. But I'm going to tell you, it ain't fun. You don't have quality of life. You I mean, you know, you it, it, it. this is one of the reasons I hated the car rental business so much because it took so much time and I had to be there and all this other stuff. And for me, as someone who made money really made money before the car rental business, the car rental business completely and utterly sucked. So this is what's going to happen to you with the death, the, the, the jump start. This is a jump start because I was asking, you know, the people here in the building, like, you know, what are the people who got um, evicted do? And it's like, we really don't have any idea. They, they did enough to get in here, but we're not really sure. So, one of the things I've noticed that is a lot of people who live in this building don't have normal jobs. There's a group of people who get up and go to work and their car goes because they, they go to a job. But there's a group of people who I feel are doing social media. Also, I, I'll do a whole video on that. Uh, everyone's trying to be a social media star, do lives. What's her name? Pinky doll, where she's just sitting up there making this nonsensical stuff. Uh let me tell you something. What Pinky Doll is doing is not long term. It's not because other influencers will come in and someone else will supersede her. And it's just a matter of time before her income takes a nose down. I would be shocked if her income stays as high as it is for a year. I would be shocked. So. Everyone's looking for these shortcuts and these escapes and these little things where they can just um, get out of doing normal work. But once again, the future is waiting on you. The future is going to happen. So this is one of the things that has jump started the death of the middle class, because essentially right now, guess who's buying all these houses? Guess who's buying these houses? You know that 30 percent of the houses bought in the last year were paid for in cash. It's people like me, the boomers. Well, actually, I'm not a boomer. I actually came after the boomer generation. So it's not the young people. It's not the millennials. It's the boomers who already have a house that they paid maybe one hundred and fifty thousand it appreciated to seven hundred and fifty thousand. In the case of California, they paid one fifty. Now the house is worth one point five million. Sell the house in California, move to Texas, buy a nice smaller thing for seven fifty. Have seven fifty in the bank. Have a paid off house. This is one of the reasons that it is so hard because things have changed. Things have drastically changed. But essentially. It is going to be very hard for people who are not in line to inherit the wealth from the boomer class for them to get ahead in the future. So 
one of the things that you have to see is, and there, there's a few other things. I'll be doing videos, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification about the death of the middle class because the middle class was dying, okay? It was already dying. It started a long time ago, but the jump start, and what I mean by jump start, it has increased dramatically. And I'm talking about you're going to start seeing people suffer. You're going to start seeing people who will rent their whole life, who will never own a home. You will start seeing people who will just literally be doing the most for the least because they're choosing things that don't graduate. They're choosing things that do not um, open the door to future progression. And this is one of the things that's missing with the social media. I, there was a comment out here, and th this is funny. Um, right here. Let me see. Can I actually, this is kind of like a receipt, but I'm not going to show it. But these are my pay stubs, right? I pay myself. And there was a comment that was like, well, you won't get Social Security. Uh, let me explain something to you. Since I have an S Corp and I pay taxes and I file taxes and I pay myself in a legitimate manner, guess what? I max out my Social Security. They stopped taking Social Security out of my check at 137, at 137,000. They stopped taking Social Security out. <laughs> so I'm going to get the max in Social Security. But once again, a lot. And this is another thing with the people who are doing the gig economy, who who. A lot of y'all, I'm not going to say you're stupid, but you're not educated. You don't know how things work. Um, I forget all things real deal. The video talking about like maybe 30 percent of the country knows how to buy a house. Maybe 30 percent, 70 percent don't know because like I can tell you the whole process. Number one. Even when you come in with cash, they're going to verify that cash. That's the situation that I ran into. Uh, they was like, oh, this is a lot of cash. How? And then I was able to show them the bank statements where I, that cash has been sitting in my bank account for a long, long time. And um, the whole deal is um, many people are not preparing themselves for the future. And this is the big thing that's going on for the death of the middle class. All right, so right now we're having a sale on the manhood program. Now, essentially, I'm gonna let you know, I'm getting ready to get into the man training, but essentially what we're doing this, this time, which is a mistake I made last time, I am doing the business stuff first. And in the future, there will be a new website with all of the freaky dirty stuff on it, but you gotta go through the business stuff first. You got to go ahead and get your money together. Got to get your credit together. You got to get your financially stable. And then we get into the freaky deaky stuff because that was a big mistake. That's how I ended up with this channel where I talked about business 90% of the time. But 90% of the people who were here were for the man stuff. It was kind of crazy, but I've learned from my lessons. So if you want to go ahead and take part of the sale that's going on right now, Tuesday through Sunday, Sunday, the sale is over. Go ahead, hit the link below. And I will see you guys in the next one.